Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's do a numerical example of trying to find the critical mass required for a collapse. We'll do it twice. In either case, the temperature will be 100 Kelvin, that's rather cool. But here we have kind of a, a small density of 4 times 10 to the 7 molecules per cubic meter. And here we'll take a density of 4 times 10 to the 13 cubic meters. And you see, with a much greater density, you don't near need the mass in order to cause gravitational collapse. Remember, we had Jean's length defined like this. We had the escape velocity for, um, uh, defined like this for a monatomic molecule. And then we calculated the critical mass. Now it's equal to this. And let's use the Boltzmann's constant and the molecular mass rather than the gas constant and the molar mass. So you can see how it's done like this. All right, so do, let's do our example A. And so we have the critical mass is equal to the, to, uh, the quantity 5kt divided by 3mg to the 3 halves power times 1 over the density to the 1 half power. So let's that equal to, so end up with 5 times, that's 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. The temperature is 100 Kelvin, and that's 3 times uh, the, that would be the molecular mass, Let's see here. Well, first of all, for a cubic meter, we have 4. So we have 4 times 10 to the... No, no, that's for the density. We don't need that. We just need the mass. Sorry about that. I'm getting a little off track here. Let's get rid of that. Uh, we just need the molar mass, which is uh, uh, one atomic mass unit. That's 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. G is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And we take the whole thing and raise that to the 3 halves power. And then we divide that by the density. Now the density is going to be 4 times 10 to the minus 7 per cubic meter. But then we also have to multiply that times the mass, let's see, uh, not, not minus, but plus 7. So that's the number of molecules per cubic meter, but now we have to multiply that with the mass per molecule, which is going to be 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27, assuming it's hydrogen, and then we have to take the square root of that. There we go. All right, now we need a calculator. So, how that's done. All right, 5 times 1.38 e to the 23 minus times 100 divided by 3 divided by 1.67 e to the 27 minus divided by 6.67 e to the 11 minus equals now we're going to raise that to the 3 halves power so 1.5 there oh. okay let's try that do that again push the wrong button five times 1.38 e to the 23 minus times 100 divided by 3, divided by 1.67 e to the 27 minus, divided by 6.67 e to the 11 minus, equals. Now we raise that to the 1.5 power, okay? And now we divide it by the square root of this. So, uh, divide by 4 e to the 7 times 1.67 e to the 27 minus we take the square root of that and like this equals ah now we have this is equal to 1.15 times 10 to the 34 power now of course the units here is in kilograms now how does that compare to the mass of the sun we know that the solar mass is equal to 2 times 10 to the 30th kilogram. 30, 30 kilogram. There we go. And this is 1.15 times 10 to the 34. So 34, that would be 10,000 times. That would be approximately 5,000 times the mass of the sun. All right. Again, we're working approximately because these are not exact things. So the mass of that molecular cloud, the minimum mass required would be about 5,000 times the mass of the sun. So if something like this collapsed, 
collapses, you probably end up with some sort of star cluster. And of course, we see a lot of star clusters um, in our galaxy, in other galaxies. So that's the kind of situation you would end up when you have a smaller density. You need a much larger cloud of gas to begin that collapse. So what would it look like if we had a much greater density like this? So well, then you realize, notice that for part B, Notice that the ratio of 4 times 10 to the 13 cubic per cubic meter divided by 4 times 10 to the 7th per cubic meter, well, that ratio is uh, a million to 1, like this. Now, if we take the square root of that, because notice we're talking about the density, and the density, well, we take the square root of the density in the denominator. So if we take the square root of a million, the square root of 1 million, we get a thousand. So in other words, with a density which is one million times as great, we now divide by number which is a thousand times bigger. You divide by a number which is a thousand times bigger, that means that for part B, the critical mass, oh, critical mass is going to be approximately five times the mass of the sun instead of 5,000 times the mass of the sun. So you can see that if the density in a local pocket of that nebula is much greater and reaches densities this great, and again, that can happen due to the radiation of a very hot blue star. It can happen because of nebulas collide. When it builds up the density sufficiently high, you could get collapses that produce stars, or at least segments of the cloud that collapse into a segment that is five times the mass of the sun. So it doesn't have to be super large. If the density is high enough, a small enough section of the cloud could potentially collapse, the minimum critical density needed uh, for a star to form, or maybe a couple stars to form, because this then could fracture further into a couple of stars, and now you end up with a binary system. So that's an example of how we would calculate that. Uh, the reason why I was a little bit confused here is because I had calculated this before and I'm off by factor 2 for some reason, uh, but this should be the correct value, so my notes were wrong, this is correct, and so you get values roughly this big, and that is how it's done.